Hey everyone, welcome to She Devils United. Happy Saturday. We are back. Hope everyone is having a good weekend, enjoying the weather wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Guys, we're going to get straight into it because we've got Frankie De Jong stuff. Oh, yeah, it's taking the piss on, on the valuation of Martinez. We've got a new centre back target. We've got um bro Broby, Broby stuff as well. A goalkeeper that we're probably going to bring in ASAP. Um, a little bit of other tidbits, uh, a, a right back possibility um, and a couple of other bits. OK, so we are going to get into it, but make sure you're liking the video uh, straight off once you come in. OK, but it looks like. It looks like Frankie De Jong deal to Manchester United may be dead in the water, guys, before it even before we've even thrown in a life raft. Um, Manchester United have been working on this deal. Now, according to Spanish reports, Man United have been working on this deal for the last 50 days. But we know it's been longer than that. It's been at least seven weeks. At least seven weeks we've been working on this Frankie de Jong deal. Now, we know all of the credible journalists have been saying we are in talks, we're in direct talks. It, it's you know, 65 million and the add-ons are what we're working on. And then we've heard recently in the last week that Barcelona owe Frankie de Jong an enormous amount of money from deferred payments and clauses and loyalty bonuses and all of that. And that's what's holding up the transfer. But guys, also, and Romano said it the other day, Frankie de Jong has still not discussed personal terms with Manchester United because he doesn't want to leave Barcelona. Manchester United have known this for a long time. No, the reports are coming from Spanish reports, Sport and Mundo Deportivo. M Mundo, not really as credible as Sport, but Spro Sport broke a couple of the Frankie de Jong stuff weeks ago. And Mundo, so the board of them are coming out and saying Frankie de Jong has turned down the chance to go to Manchester United and he wants to stay at Barcelona. They also have a quote saying he has no intention of joining Manchester United. Now, we know Laporta as well, uh, the Barcelona president, has been saying publicly that De Jong is not for sale. We've all been kind of speculating that he's just saying that publicly for the fans' sake. And he, he did the same with Messi not too long before they sold Messi. Um, but I don't know if the player doesn't want to go. Now, Duncan Castles came out tonight and I give Duncan Castles so much shit in this channel. He did break that Oli stuff before Oli got sacked and he did break the Ronaldo stuff. He was the first one. So he does get certain things right. It depends who he's writing for Duncan Castles because we saw the other day Duncan Castles said that Man United had bid 125 million euro for Anthony and Martinez and that wasn't true. He was writing for the Daily Record. However, tonight he's writing for the Times and he said, despite Barcelona... Frankie de Jong's agent and Eric Ten Hag all pushing Frankie de Jong to agree uh, to a move to Manchester United. He keeps reiterating that he wants to stay at Barcelona. No, back to, to uh, Spanish reports, Mundo Deportivo and Sports saying that we already know the deal has been delayed because Barcelona owe uh, Frankie de Jong 18... 80 million this year, 19 million next year um, in deferred payments. Um, so that's probably what the holdup is. But um, we don't know. I think my inter our internet might be off, guys. Bear with me. Just bear with me. Um, we've been in talks, according to the article in Spain, for 50 days like i said but i think it's been longer than 50 days i definitely do uh no it's me guys um i'm gonna come out and i'm gonna come back in just bear with me two seconds Guys, it's one of them ones. Man United don't need Frankie de Jong, says Ray, but, but we need midfielders. 
we've got Fred and McTominay and that's all the midfielders we have. Like literally that's it. Th that's all the midfielders are. Now guys, the Athletic say that Barcelona will try and make Frankie de Jong take another pay cut. I mean, really? They already know. Uh, shout out guys, apologies, apologies. Um, so Barcelona are trying to make Frankie de Jong take a pay cut. I think they're cheeky bastards for that. He's already taken massive, massive pay cuts at Barcelona. Deferred payments, deferred loyalty bonuses, deferred this, deferred that. Do I still have no sound? Do I still have no sound? Can you hear me, folks? Can you hear me? Grand, okay. Uh, so, no. <laughs> it is what it is. Who missed me? Who missed me while I wasn't here? No. Barcelona want Frankie de Jong to take another pay cut. I think it's massively cheeky of Barcelona. Fucking massively cheeky. Uh, shout out to everyone. Guys, shout out to you all legends for bearing with me. Uh, smash a like on the video for yourselves anyway. Not for me because I've had a mare so far. But guy at Barcelona out here taking the piss on Frankie de Jong. And I'm going to say Frankie de Jong needs to tell them to take, you know, take a run and jump. No. The Athletics say the Paris camp obviously is not keen on another pay cut. And can you blame him? They already owe him a fortune. And if I was Frankie de Jong, I'd be telling them Go goodbye and God bless. Goodbye and God bless. You already owe me this amount of money. You're already trying to sell me. I'm trying to be loyal. You're not here. You know, these hoes ain't loyal out here in these streets. Barcelona with Frankie de Jong. Um, after all the pay cuts and the deferred payments he's he's done for them, they still want to bin him. Now, the Athletic also say the solution to the problem, you know, Barca want Frankie de Jong to take a pay cut and then Fra Frankie de Jong doesn't want to do it. The solution is a move and a transfer. However, Frankie de Jong still not willing to leave. He doesn't want to go. Um, I don't know, folks. I, I, I just don't know. Um, let me see what you guys are saying. Still think we are getting Frankie de Jong. It's all tactic from the Spanish media to make United pay uh, for his wages that Barcelona owe him. Yes, guys, please like the video, please. Um, he wants Champions League football. Yes. No. The article in, in the Spanish, I mean, sports say that Chelsea would be a viable option for Frankie de Jong. And, and the direct quote is, a serious offer from Chelsea would be an option. And as Brandon said, it would be an option because they want Champions League football. Now, shout out to Yash, who's been a member for two months, my, three months, my guy Yash. He says, zero tolerance for these idiots. If they want to come, they can they can. If De Jong doesn't say anything, he can take another pay cut at Barcelona. I've always wanted De Jong and you have Yash, to be fair, but but ain't got time for this. Yeah, I agree with Yash speaking facts. You either want to go or you want to stay. And if you want to stay, like Yash said, take a pay cut, boy, and earn pittance at Barcelona. You'll end up taking them to the court of arbitration because they're not going to pay you nothing, nothing. And if that's what you want and that's what you're going to accept, stay there. But the infuriating thing is, I mean, the player is blatantly saying he doesn't want to go. Why haven't we moved on to the next person on the list and to me the only obvious answer is there's no other, other person on that list there's no other target they're all in for Frankie de Jong and that's it I mean yes we've been tentatively linked to Neves and and uh Tillemans but we've not opened any talks with them we, we've not actively been going for them we've wasted seven fucking weeks on Frankie de Jong seven weeks Barca used to to us to broker a deal with De Jong. I think, Adam, that wouldn't surprise me. It absolutely wouldn't. Uh, to be honest, I'm not gutted about Frankie De Jong now. It's been unpopular for me for a long time, but I've been saying for how long now? I'd rather go for somebody else. That I'd be delighted if we sign him, but there are players out there who are equally as good, 
who are cheaper and who want to come to Manchester United more than Frankie Dion. Go and get Neves. Go and get Tillemans. Go and get them. We, we, we've talked about loads of other players. Where's Peaceful? If Peaceful was in the live chat right now, he'd be shouting Conrad Limer, shouting his name in all caps, Conrad Limer, available for 18 million, equally as good as Frankie Dion. Equally, we have a transfer committee who can all veto each other's tar I mean, that's just, I mean, that's just laughable in itself, which is probably what they're doing, which is probably the hold up. That is the same question I'm asking. He doesn't want to come. Why are we still punching for someone who doesn't want to come? Go get Anthony. He wants to come. Yes. Yes. Did anyone see the Eric Ten Hag interview? Nothing about Ronaldo. That came from MUTV, though, so they wouldn't have been asking about Ronaldo. Uh, yes, Dan in with a quote from um, Gavin and Stacey, one of my faves. Reality, the transfer window is a total fuck up, says Robert. It has been a shambles. It has been nothing short of an embarrassment. I expected it to be a tough window because we didn't get Champions League and we're in a mess and we're in a proper, the biggest rebuild we've been in since Sir Alex Ferguson first came in back in 1986. And I knew it was going to be tough, but at the same time, I didn't think it would be this bad. Eric Ten Hag does need to say, uh, need to say in transfers, but it's time he was overruled. I agree. I'm all for, and I say it all the time, go and get the manager's targets. But at the same time, there's got to be someone with some level of common sense out here saying, OK, sometimes the number one target is just simply unattainable. I mean, we'd all love Mbappe and Bellingham and all of these madmen in our team. But sadly, it's unrealistic. And if the player is saying for seven weeks, I don't want to leave. You gotta move on. Move on. If we miss out on Ericsson, no, I'm hitting the panic button. No, um, I, I read tonight that Ericsson his medical will be happening shortly and it came from very credible rob dawson from espn shout out to k2 young back in here put the young on the back burner and focus on martinez and anthony rubin uh, came out he wanted a move for 75 million if we overspend on de young when rubin wanted a move it makes no sense de pong this deal stinks of bullshit de long as danielle says uh de young said we ain't the rest uh, taking pay cuts like me. Who does he think he is? He isn't fit to lay scores his boots. Guys, I've been saying it. Frankie de Jong has been a mixed bag, an absolute mixed bag at Barcelona. There's a reason, There's I know it's financial, but they're not getting rid of their young players, Gavi and Pedri and these, these men. Frankie de Jong is disposable because he hasn't been a success at Barcelona. And the deal has had red flags after red flags after red flags. And I've been saying plenty more fish in the sea. Move The minute he said, and I said it, that he didn't want to come, we should have moved on. Uh, McFred, it is then, shoot me. Shoot me, Andy, please. If you see me outside Old Trafford next season, I'm asking you to shoot me. Um, Sports said yesterday that, that uh, Bali didn't discuss De Jong. Yeah, they did. That is true. I think they were there probably discussing um, the, the fullbacks maybe. But do we know for sure it didn't come up? Uh, Frankie, ding dong. I love it. I think we, we'll get him, says Ramo. We should sign Tillemans and our Neves. Otherwise, we'll have another season of McFred. Shout out to Flex, who's in here. Are, we are wasting so much time on one player. Seven weeks already on this transfer. It's it's infuriating. It's just infuriating. Do you think it's Ten Hag that's telling Murta not to pull out? I think he really, really wants him. And I think they're desperate. And he's probably the marquee summer signing, that big name player. 
but I, I, I've said it, guys, a lot of times. I don't want the big name player. Get the player that's most suited, that wants to come in with the right attitude, you know, that wants to come to this football club and work hard and work for the manager. He doesn't want to come. Like, what more do we got to say? I don't think he'll go to Chelsea. I don't either. I, I don't either, Michael. I think he'll either go to us or he'll stay at Barcelona. That's what I think will happen. Frankie de Jong is weak and a lot of people think he's not very physical, folks. A lot of people think he's going to be a CDM. He's not physical enough to be a CDM. How close is Ericsson? Very close. He's doing his medical. Now, the, the quote was shortly. I'm assuming that was today, but nothing has been announced. He won't get La Liga football the way he's going. I hope Barcelona don't buy anyone. Me too, Danish. Fuck Barcelona. Frankie de Rong pull out. Yes, best pun yet. Um, but I, I think, Frankie, don't get me wrong. I, I think Frankie de Jong is a really, really good player. I think he would massively improve our midfield. I don't think he's worth the money. I don't think he's worth the wages. And the minute I heard seven weeks ago, he didn't want to come to Manchester United. I said, walk away. And seven weeks later, here we are with the exact same problem. Barcelona must want him out if they're asking him for a pay cut. Um, so Ericsson is the replacement for Diang fucking hell. Mary, the coach, have a system and look how much better McFred is going to be. Ray, I'm, I, I, I will respectfully disagree. I, I mean, why doesn't Pep play with McFred? You know, there's only so much a manager can do if a player is not. Yes, he can help them, but there's only so much a manager can do if the player are lacking ability. Shout out to uh, Iva, who's in here. Um, if you was in the Champions League, you you would get him. Maybe I know that Barcelona. He has said numerous times that they're his dream club, his boyhood club. He's always dreamed of playing for Barcelona. Um, I think it's hard to get a player like that out of a club. You know, I, I just do. Um, we had plenty of big names last season that couldn't be bothered. Yes, all of them except Ronaldo and De Gea. I think Lissandro Martinez will be one of the best signings for us. He is strong, physical, but also a ball player. I think he is that midfield player that understands his play. Yeah, that's why I think he wants him too. That's why I think Ten Hag is going for... Um, watch everything blow now as they turn up the fan. That's what I think um, Eric Ten Hag is going for. All Dutch players, players in the Dutch league, Ajax players are ex-Ajax players because he wants them to bed in quickly so they will already know his style of play so then the other players that are in our squad right now can can play catch up and it'd be easy for easier for him to hit the ground running. Now, Charlie talked about um a striker earlier on. Um, all my friend says he disappears in big games. Who does he sound like? Who does he sound like? Um, what's the er news on Ericsson? He's uh due to um sign the contract and have his medical. Mary De Jong is obviously has obviously given an indication he's willing to join United. You would think so, Kevin. You would think with the fact that we're still negotiating, we've gotten some indication from the players' camp. But all of the... I mean, Romano said he doesn't want to come. Um, he, he, you know, the Times are saying he only wants his agent, Barcelona and Eric Ten Hag, are trying to, to convince him and he's still... He's still not being convinced. Peaceful, I gave you a shout out earlier on. I said, um, if you were in the chat, you'd be screaming about the alternatives for Frankie de Jong. You'd be screaming liar. Um, guys, please like the video, please. Um, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Can we get to 150 likes? Please smash that like button. What a rebuild day. Seven players out, one player in. Tottenham have already signed. I didn't know that about Tottenham. Seven players. And I'll say with about those seven players that we got out, most of them were on freeze. We've only sold one player for money, and it's Andres Pereira. Henderson went on loan. Um, 
VS asks, can I, we have some positive new transfer news? Um, we might be signing a goalkeeper if that's positive for some. Not me <laughs> personally, but it depends. But look, guys, we're in for an RB Leipzig striker, Brian Broby, okay? Now, he is only 20. He was on loan at Ajax from January to the summer. And then when Eric Ten Hag was the manager, the plan was that Ajax buy him. Now, Ajax are still heavily linked with him. But I think the reports were Eric Ten Hag had been on the phone to him to try and convince him to come to Manchester United. He is Dutch, so he fits the Eric Ten Hag model. He is at Leipzig. He's only 20. Um, he ha obviously has been hit and miss um, in the Bundesliga. However, when he went on loan to Ajax, he got eight goal contributions in just 11 games. And a lot of those goal contributions came from the bench too. So he is a player that can get numbers. However, it is the Dutch league. We all know that the quality in the Dutch league, it's not top five quality in European leagues okay so the Daily Mail are saying that Manchester United are in for uh Brian Broby Brian Bob Broby he's valued at excuse me guys 17 million pounds Leipzig are ready to agree a fee to sell him but Jamie Jackson from the Guardian obviously more credible than the Daily Mail or the the Mail Sport that the in, there is interest for Manchester United for Brian Broby, Broby and Eric Ten Hag. However, the belief is he will go and join Ajax. They were probably further along in 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 the negotiations there. Okay, um, I already touched on Ericsson. ESPN and Rob Dawson have said he is set to undergo his medical shortly. Was the quote? Um, but he's yet, but he could still join the tour in Melbourne. We announced this signing last week. Why hasn't the medical been done? Why hasn't the contract been signed? Why is he not on the plane? It's a free signing. There was no real negotiating. I mean, what what is the delay on Christian Eriksen? Now, there were some reports that Brentford still might be in for him. Their manager, that prick, he is such a fucking prick to their manager. The Brentford manager, I can't fucking stand him. And you here shit stirring too. Fuck you. Um, but a look, according to Rob Dawson, a couple of credible people, there's no truth in that. They say he's talking absolute nonsense. Um, and he will, he will be a Man United player, but I just don't get the hold up in a free transfer in Christian Eriksen in the medical. And, and, and why is he not on the tour? Why is he not on the tour? He's a fucking Wally. He absolutely is. No, a little tidbit, an interesting one. It's coming from Lockhurst, the MEN, the only credible journalist at the MEN who does get stuff from the club. And he said Manchester United are interested in a right back this summer. Now, very interesting because if Ronaldo goes, we've got no striker and he needs to be replaced. We still don't have our centre-back, no sign of a CDM. We don't know if we're getting a right winger, but we're going for a right back. Now, me personally... I think we needed a right back more urgently than a left back. I know that apparently Aaron Wambasaka is going to be sold, but I know Yash recently made a really good point in saying if if Aaron Wambasaka goes, who's and and um Brandon Williams goes, who is going to be the backup to Dallo? And and that just I mean, who is going to be the backup? So unless we're going to bring in a new right back, you have to keep Aaron Mambasaka. And I'd rather, I'm sorry, as much as I would like a right back, we're desperate for a CDM and we're desperate for a striker. So, no. Jade Spence is available for £12 million. Now, the last I heard, has he is he still available? I don't think he's actually moved yet. I know Tottenham and Arsenal, the London clubs, were interested in him. £12 million. Mukieli 
of Leipzig was available for 10 million. I don't can't remember if it was pounds or euros, but he was available. Is is he gone to Spurs? Fucking hell. How much did they get him for, guys? Let me know. Um I think if if Lissandro Martinez is coming, he's going to be a centre back. We can't have him playing in all different positions because we need we need a centre back and we need a CDM. The player can play in two positions in the one game. I get what you're saying. He is a versatile player. And if we're if we're stuck for you know, if we've got midfield issues and you know, a midfield injury crisis, of course he could slot in there. And I totally get what you're saying. But we need both positions filled by two players. Uh, definitely by two players. What have I missed? Says Jimmy, where's your late note, Jimmy? But Frankie de Jong apparently turning down Manchester United and he wants to stay at Barcelona. We are fucked, says Yas. Yash, yes. Um, Lissandro, I, you know what? I would, if I was signing Lissandro Martinez, now I know he's got good aerial stats, but he's five foot eight and a half slash five foot nine, arguably five foot nine. I don't think he's tall enough to, I hope he comes and proves me wrong and shuts me up. I have massive doubts about his height to be a Premier League starting centre back. Um, and I, I would play him at CDM. Lissandro Martinez, but then I would go and get a centre back because you need both. Don't blame him, says Jimmy. Yeah, apparently he wants Champions League football. Lissandro equals bye bye slabbed. That is true. Um, Lindelof Maguire can be centre back with a DM. Ugh, no, I just I I've had enough of them. They're not good enough. They don't play well together. They don't complement one another. No. Play Phil Jones as a right back, a jack of all trades, and a master of none. Um, he's going to Dundee for three hundred thousand pounds. They're signing him on a permanent deal. Um, guys, we're going to move on. Man United closing in on a, another real priority position, and I say that laced with sarcasm. Laced with sarcasm. Got him for fucking fifteen million. Is that yours? Yes. Anyway, the other right backs were Denzel Dumfries, 40 million, Max Ahrens, but Mukieli for 10 million. But look, we'll move on because another priority position Man United need desperately a goalkeeper. No, people will say he's free. Ericsson was free. And look how long we fanny arsed around trying to sign Christian Eriksen. Why are we wasting time getting a fucking goalkeeper? Why? We've got uh, Tom Heaton. We've got Dean, or we've got uh, David De Gea. Just promote one of the fucking kids to be the third go choice goalkeeper. Why are we wasting time? Why in 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 a no? It's coming from talk sport, but then it got picked up by loads of different outlets, and they're saying Manchester United are interested and in closing in on Lazio goalkeeper Thomas Stracosa. Thomas Stracosa, a backup third, but when, Yash, when does a backup third go goalkeeper ever play? Never. Just give, promote one of the kids. Promote one of the kids. We don't need to be wasting time on, on, on fucking non-priority signings. We've wasted enough time already. No. He, he was Lazio's number one, so I'm sure he is a good goalkeeper. 27-year-old um, Albanian player has been in talks. His agent has been in talks with Manchester United this week. Straposa. Straposa. Yes, shout out to Yash for phonetically spelling it for me. Lazio goalkeeper Thomas Stratzoka. Stratzos Straposa. Uh 
he played 31 games last season for the Lazio, so he he is their number one goalkeeper. He is a decent replacement and option for Dean Henderson, but why are we focusing on a goalkeeper? Someone make it make sense. Someone make it make sense to me because it just does not make sense. We need a CDM. We need two midfielders and we can't get Frankie De Jong. We need a CDM. We need a centre-back. Ajax taking the piss um, with the valuation for Martinez and we will get into that. We need a right-back more than we need a third-choice fucking goalkeeper. We need a striker. We've got no striker. Ronaldo is going to go. We've got Martial. We might as we've got no striker because I mean fucking hell, he's been a wall for the last fucking two years. So we've got no goalkeeper, and we're going signing a fucking third choice goalkeeper. Someone, uh, honestly, the mind boggles. I'm sure he'll be decent. Some even arguing he could be number one. Get out there. Um, he's free. I know. Ericsson is free and we can't get the deal done quickly, even Christian Ericsson. So Fulham were also interested in last week. He's probably about fucking Fulham's level. Glazer, Arnold, Marta, Fletcher out. Um, third choice goalkeeper, backup left back and a backup camp. Where are the players to improve the starting eleven. This is what I said. No, we need players to improve our squad as well. We do. We've lost five, six players from our squad and we're going to lose a couple more deadwood. So we do need to replace players in the squad. But we desperately need good, good, for world-class to excellent first-team players. And Andrew says it for me. This transfer window has been a fucking catastrophe. It has been an absolute catastrophe from start to right now. No, they can they can turn it around, guys. We can we can get Martinez done in the next couple of days. Frankie De Jong go for us. Anthony, a striker, a, whoever else you're thinking of. We can turn it around. But is anyone confident in this board? And Murta Fletcher. Arnold, all of these men, it's because uh, John Murtaugh has been here since 2013. Hello? He didn't just join the football club, he's been here since 2013. Darren Fletcher has zero footballing experience as a technical director. What does he do? Because last season or the season before, during the Euros, when we were supposed to be uh, looking at buying players, he was on BBC or ATV as a fucking pundit, Darren Fletcher. And I remember sitting there thinking, what's Darren Fletcher doing? Should he not be working for Manchester United right now? No, he's on the BBC or the ITV as a pundit. Honestly, we need a new transfer team. Good to see Adam made it to Bangkok. Uh, Ruben Neves says, John, green and gold. You know it, guys. They released the shirts yesterday. At Mary Glazers out, I'll send you a link to the fake shirts. Is there a new goalkeeper kit to market? Yes, Danielle. Hashtag Glazers out. Did anyone think he was telling the truth? Guys, no. What I said about when Marta was wrongly filmed against his knowledge with the fans from the 58. I liked that he didn't bullshit about last season. I really liked that he didn't, you know, because he could have given the, you know, the typical answer that we usually get, the spin. And he didn't spin. He said it wasn't good enough. We wasted money. And at least he was honest and I respected that. But when he was saying, we got 200 million, we got the money that Ten Hag wants. I knew all of that was bullshit. I said it on this channel. I said, he's just placating the fans to get rid of them because he shot themselves because they said they were turning up to his house, which I don't agree with. So he just wanted to get rid of them by any means necessary. So he was willing to tell them anything to de-escalate the situation, which I can understand, but then he's a fucking bare face liar. But We've been lied to for over 10 years, folks. So is anyone surprised? Maybe Eric Ten Hag wants someone to push David De Gea. Not a bad 
not a bad shout from Tiernan. Shout out to Tim who says, can he play midfield? Oh my God, this club is bas- baffling. If Ronaldo leaves, we should go for Shtick or Jonathan David, says Vicky. Um, Glazer's out. Here's the other thing. Henderson is on loan anyway if Dean Henderson gets injured. We never do that, though. We never seem to recall Paris from the loan, even if we're having um, an emergency situation within the squad. Our transfer policy policy is like a duck shoot at the run fair. Uh, shoot at the fun fair, my apologies. You know, I'm blind from far away. Dybala as a panic boy no kill honestly kill me. Do you think if we do not get to young? Yeah, I do, because we've wasted so much time already on this signing. We've wasted so much time already on it. Um moving on from the goalkeeper. Martinez. This is another one. Again, it might be not popular, guys. I would tell Ajax to go fuck themselves. No, what I will say is Ajax can charge whatever they want. They've already got picked apart. They've already lost four to five first team players. Ajax are desperate to keep their players. They've already lost their manager as well. So I I don't blame Ajax for charging whatever they want. But, you know, they didn't have that energy for Bayern and a couple of uh, Dortmund and a couple of other teams. It seems like it's only Man United. No, it's Man United's own fault there. Everyone sees us coming and they rinse us because they know they can get the money out of us because we're just a joke in the transfer window. But they're taking the piss, Ajax. I'm sorry, they are taking the proverbial piss. The mail, no, it's coming from Mike Verway, who, who very, very credible Dutch journalist, who a couple of nights ago said Man United had put in a 50 million euro bid for Lissandro Martinez, and we already know that, okay? Now, Ajax have yet to accept the bid. Apparently, Ajax are waiting for Arsenal to come back in and counter Manchester United's bid and they're hoping for a bidding war, which again is fine. This is how transfers work. And I, you know, I'm always saying that from about Manchester United. If we can if we can get a couple of players interested or a couple of clubs interested, then maybe we can get more money. So I don't blame that from Ajax. They are obviously trying to get the most money that they can for a player. Now, the male are saying they don't want to sell him. They want, they're want they desperately trying to keep him. However, Lissandro Martinez is desperate to move to the Premier League and he doesn't want to miss out on his dream move um, to the Premier League. I ask, no, we have zero other targets. Um, the Times guys tonight are saying Eric Ten Hag wants us to increase our bid for Alessandro Martinez. To what? We've we've bid for we've bid fifty million euros for this motherfucker. Way more than he's valued, in my opinion, Alessandro Martinez. I just, I know Ajax are looking for a bit more, but they're not going to accept fifty million. They want more, and Eric Ten Hag wants us to increase the bid. I'm sorry. And Mike Verwey has confirmed that Ajax want Manchester United to pay more money, more than 50 million euros for Lissandro Martinez. They're playing hardball. I get it. Again, they can charge whatever they want. They can put whatever price on him. Now, the Times are also saying that Ajax want to find replacements for Martinez or and or Anthony if they lose both players. And of course they do, because if they get 120 million, they'll want the replacement in before they get that money because then they get rinsed by other clubs. But it's just, I'm, I'm like, I'm, my blood is boiling because uh, James Garner is a good player. I'm a Nottingham Forest fan. You need him in the team, but He's not, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if he's ready or not, James Garner. I'd rather have Ro McNally for free. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. And we will talk about another alternative who's available for less than 20 million as well. 
Shout out to um, Ajaz who says, I owe Mary, I am the only one who got so pissed when Man United announced Bruno's number as if it was a sign-in. Yeah, I mean... Oh. I just, uh, I, I, I feel like I'm losing the will to even vent. Because at this stage, you come to the point, you say, what, what, you come to the stage, you say, what is even the point? What is even the point? Now, again, I would walk away from this Martinez deal. Where are the gems? Where are the cheap players? And I understand Eric Ten Hag wants these players. He was Ajax player of the year last year. Ten Hag wants players that know how to play his system and all of that stuff. I get it. I understand. 50 million euros. They think this player is worth more than 50 million euros. Why are we not going for Jules fucking Koundé? Someone make it make sense. They want more than 50 million euros. Sevilla, the last time I checked, would take 60 million either euros or pounds for Jules Koundé. Go and get Jules Koundé and tell Ajax to go fuck themselves. That's what I would do. I named, and, and as well, I named all of the alternatives to Anthony the other day on this channel. Go and get somebody else other than Anthony. And let that be it. No more players from Ajax and our Dutch connections, too bloody obvious. Um, why are Man United getting Ajax players? I think because Ten Hag trusts them. He's already worked with them. They know how to play a Ten Hag system. Guys, there's 184 legends watching. Please like the video. Can we get to 150 likes? Because we've gotten there on all of the recent streams. Please, please, can we get to 150 likes? Get the likes up, support the channel. Um, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Let me know if you're if you're frustrated with the Man United transfer window so far, smash a like on the video. That's how I know you're pissed off. As bad as this preseason is, can you imagine how we feel with Maguire as captain? What are we even doing? Do we even know what we're doing? What was the plan? Where is the plan? Are we still on the plan? Who even knows at this? I don't even think Man United know. Uh, West Ham just got Flynn Downs for 12 million. He is a, a much better CM than Garner. Um, 18 was a good number. I think he was eight at Lisbon and he wanted to be eight. I've already had a shit year. This club makes me, uh, makes the will to live even lower. Yash, never let him fucking let you feel like that. Delict will be a great signing. It's between Chelsea and Bayern. I hope Bayern get him and Chelsea don't. Um, I watched James in the flesh and on five or six occasions last season. He is decent. Uh, but he is not a top half player. At some some Nottingham Forest fans say that too. But yes, you need to give me some good transfer news. <laughs> okay, Nell. I know it's hard to get Italian players out of and and players who've been in the Italian league out of Serie A for you know it's hard to get them out of there. But come on, we didn't even try. We didn't even try. When was our last good transfer window? We all thought last season, but really, none of those players played Sancho a little bit, but the other two, well, Ronaldo, obviously, but Ronaldo's leaving this year. The other two flattered to deceive before that. Not in the last since Sir Alex left. Uh, let Jones go back, James go back on loan. How about James Garner, guys? It's a massive risk. It's a massive, massive risk. I would love Garner to either get a Premier League loan or be a squad player and be given chances as a squad player. We've got Thursday night football and then we play Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. So uh, even in the Europa League, to give him decent minutes, either or. But you cannot start next season 
with Jimmy Garner as your starting CDM. You you just can't. It wouldn't be fair on him either to put all that on him. Um, we could have 20 targets, but, uh, but by none, shameful how this club is run. Guys, Martinez, what do you think? I mean, should we be paying more than 50 million euros for this player? Uh, Garner needs a loan in a top league. Varane, Sancho and Ronaldo seemed good at the time, but the gaping hole in midfield was our problem. Ronaldo betrayed Manchester United. He might join Chelsea to rub it in. Um, he will saying to Fulham, can we loan Pereira back? We'll be saying to Fulham, Garner isn't ready, nor is Garnacho. Big step up from the championship to the Prem. We've needed a CDM for three years. We have. <laughs> yes, that always cheers me up. I take, I, I, I take anything right now. <laughs> I take it. Um, we might as well get Roy Keane back. Fucking hell, even with his bad knees and his bad hips and his bad ankles. Berardi, St. Maximum, Maddy Cash, Connor Gallagher, Luis Felipe, Fabian Ruiz, is it? Uh, Di Lorenzo, uh, I, uh, Isco, Isaac. Yeah, there are good players out there, guys. There are potential for a lot of unrest if it doesn't improve. 57 days to the start of the window, my good God. Shout out to Mandy. Um, right back at you, Mandy. Delict is made of glass, says Nick. Um, it's because Eric Ten Hag wants players that he can trust, yeah, and implement his system. But I would agree, don't pay a penny more from for Martinez. Arsenal will walk away as well. I agree. I would be telling Ajax to piss off. Uh, hi Mary, 45 mil Phillips, 45 mil Sterling, there are bargains out there. Of course, if Man United, Man United were in for Phillips, 60 million, you know, and, and City got him for way, way less. <laughs> he isn't even good enough to be Captain Crunch. The point is we are not getting Ajax players. Two mil net spend. The Glazers are loving it. We need to protest and get the Glazers out, says Danish. Um, guys, not a penny more. Where is it gone? Where is it gone? Um, I do like Raheem Sterling. He is primarily proven. He's cheaper than Anthony. He did play for Liverpool and City. I let you guys answer that one in the chat for, for Andrew. Leeds still see us as rivals. They are. They are. Leeds will always be our rivals. Always, always. They are rivals to Manchester United. The both clubs hate one another and it goes all the way back to the 60s. But the War of the Roses as well, well before that. And they are definitely rivals of Manchester United. Ajax are pushing Ten Hag. Um, guys, we're going to move on couple of things on Ronaldo. Laurie Whitwell has said that why Manchester United publicly are saying Ronaldo is not for sale, privately, privately Manny doubt that that's the case. So basically, Man United will sell him and the board will sell him. Um, Eric Ten Hag, guys, Eric Ten Hag was not told directly by Ronaldo. He found out through an, another with her second or third party that Ronaldo wanted to go. And Laurie Whitwell says that when Eric Ten Hag first took the Manchester United job, he had a talk with Ronaldo and everything was rosy. And this was in the beginning when Eric Ten Hag took the job and Ronaldo never mentioned or gave any inclination or any hint at all whatsoever that he wanted to leave. Now, Laurie Whitwell also goes on to say Manchester United have been phoning around possible potential number nine replacements for Ronaldo. I hope so. I hope they fucking are. Um, and Eric Ten Hag is concerned about the lack of leaders in the Manchester United team. Even with Ronaldo, I am still concerned about the lack of leaders in this team. People focus too much on what Raheem can do rather than what he can do. Are you going to do a put? I don't think so, guys. For pre-season, um, 
I don't know. Maybe. What time is the game? I don't even know what time the game is on, guys. At minus 50 top red points. Dirty lead scum. Yes. Sterling had more goals and assists than Mane in three seasons. Yeah, I, I agree with whoever said, someone said Sterling was underrated. It was Adam. Yeah, I agree. He is. He asked, I know when he, I, I remember him being at Liverpool, I was thinking, mm, and when City signed him for 50 million, I was like side-eyeing, but he's proved me wrong and he's he's been absolutely outstanding for Man City, very underrated Sterling. Um, so guys, the Athletic go on to say that United are willing to do business for to sell Cristiano Ronaldo. Chelsea and Napoli remain the two most obvious uh, destinations for Ronaldo. However, they do see complications with both clubs um, if they go on to sign Ronaldo. Obviously, Chelsea, because Manchester United don't want to sell to a direct Premier League rival. Napoli, can they afford his wages? That's probably the massive thing with Napoli. I'm sure they can afford 12 million transfer fee. The wages would probably be the biggest um, stumbling block there, okay? Um, I told you, you can stay in the chat if you apologise. If you don't, you'll be blocked. That's the deal. No. Moving on from Ronaldo, because Ronaldo is going to go. Turkish reports are saying that Trab Sanspor, we played them before, I think, in the Champions League or the Europa League. Turkish club are eyeing a move for Axel Twanzebi, folks. We might actually get rid of Axel. However, the fee for Axel is €4 million Euros from um, Trab Sanspor. Have Sponsabor or whatever their name is, the Turkish club. Axel has only got one year left on his deal. I'm not sure if we can activate a further um, year on his deal. <sighs> he went on loan to Napoli and only played in two games for Napoli. Um, what I want to know, guys, would you sell him for four million? 123 likes. Get the likes up, guys. Come on. Smash a like on the video. Can we please get to 150 likes? Axel, injury prone. Um, 4 million euro. Oh, I was hoping we could get a little bit more than 4 million euro. Even 5 million pounds if we could get for him. Trabzonspor, Trabzonspor. <laughs> uh, take what we can get for Axel. Neil says take the money. Peaceful says keep him. I don't know, guys. I think he's his time is done. I take four million. Uh how Chelsea splash money with their new ship. Um, Mary, do you think relegation would rid us of the parasites? I think relegation in a couple of seasons in the championship. Yeah. But he will be blocked if he don't come out of hiding. Um, I'd accept 50 pence and a bag of pickled onion monster munch. Zaha been a brilliant player. Just get him off the wage bill. Four million so much, um, says Ejaz. Boy, sh shout out to Mark. Take care, Mark. Um, I'd sell... <laughs> Insane would sell the entire squad for four million. Cante for Ronaldo. Uh, would you guys do that? Would you guys do that deal? Would you sell Ronaldo to Chelsea for Kante? I'm going to say no. I know, I know that's controversial, but I'm going to say no. I don't. We would be strengthening a rival. Now, they might say they would be strengthening us, but. I mean, Kante is getting on in age. I still rate him. I think he's world class. I wouldn't do that deal. There's no way I want to see Ronaldo in a Chelsea shirt. There's no way. Take the four million and run, says crazy Irishman. Um, no, I would take Kante for Ronaldo. Um, 
it's a fair deal, says Peaceful. No, no HLC. No, no. Prime Kante is the player we need more than anything right now. No, never. Swap Axel for Beverly Hills Cop box set and Guns N' Roses. Yes, Ronaldo has highlighted Man United as a second-rate club. Given you're a second-rate comp, uh, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, Liverpool come back, came back trading off their name in history. Can you do the same? We've been doing that for about 10 years now. We've already been doing it in a heartbeat. Nah. Guys, the comments are mixed on Ronaldo's Kante swap. Ooh. If he could stay fit, I would keep him. He's better than secondhand fridge. Um, a four mil is better than us paying his wages. No, he only had one good game for us. That is true. Very, very true. I've changed my mind again. I want us to try and keep him Ronaldo. Ronaldo is leaving anyway. Kante would help our team for two years. Liverpool came back because they hired Klopp. It's the only chance in hell. We finally, after four years, sign a DM. Shout out to Gary, our Spurs fan, for the super chat support on the channel, saying it's not looking good. Gary, I've been ranting on here. For the last 56 minutes. It has been. Guys. What do you rate this transfer window so far out of 10? I'm going to give it a zero. A, 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 a zero. Yeah, we've got Mal Malassia. We haven't even technically signed Ericsson yet. A zero for me. We've got no centre-back. No midfielders. We've sold one player for money. One in all the dead would we have. We're going to lose Cristiano Ronaldo. Zero. Zero for me. Absolutely zero. A shout out to Gary or Spurs fan. Gary, someone said earlier Spurs signed seven players. You got Jed Spence. Let me know who else. You got Kulishevsky on a permanent. There was somebody else that I, I remembered and now they're gone again. Spurs doing bits. Let me know. Are you happy? Uh, oh, nine. Your, your transfer window, a nine out of ten. Zero, zero out of ten. We've gone backwards. I agree with Andrew. We're actually weaker currently than we were last season. Weaker. Yes, that was. Yes. Yeah, fucking hell, yes. I, I think because I wanted Basuma, I, I just... I just wiped that from my memory. No, I wouldn't take with Charles and Paris. It's a decent signing as well. Um, our club is we're weaker. Man United are weaker right now than we were last season. And we're going to lose Cristiano Ronaldo. Fuck right off. Also, right now I'm going to ask you guys, if the season started tomorrow, where do you think Man United will finish? I'm going to say ninth. Ten Hag is, he, I mean, first season, one signing, loads of Deadwood still there. Maguire, McFred, ninth. Ninth. Uh, shout out to Bonkers. Andrew says 15. That, I, I was going to say 10th, and I thought, mm, that might be a bit harsh. 10th, 11th, 9 as well, 7th. Um, our transfer window has been a mazzoline, says Gary. I love it. I, I look. At least someone is having a fucking good transfer window, even if you're Man United rivals. But actually, I don't think you are a Man United rival. Our rivals right now are West Ham and Brighton and Wolves. Uh, relegation zone, says Shane. That wouldn't surprise me. 10th, bottom three, says Robert. 18th, oh, guys. <laughs> no, I'm going to say... Honestly, I have said a couple of times, I hope I'm wrong, please God, I hope I'm wrong, that I could see this blowing up for Ten Hag right in his face and I could see him being a little bit like De Boer at Palace and not winning a game. So much for the U New United, says Carl. Shout out to Carl, who was a member as well. Yeah. 
New what? New nothing. Same shit, same players, same board, same owners, same nonsense, same lies. Gary is a closet Man United fan. Gary is a legend. Um, definitely six, says um, Qatar. Only 15 likes to get to 150, guys. There's 197 mother fucking legends watching. Please like the video. Please subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. If you're absolutely infuriated with this transfer window, show me in the likes. Show me in the likes. Um, next year is a funny season. Loads of games before the World Cup. A bad start is a killer season. Liverpool third game in. Oh my God. We only scraped six. We only scraped six because Brighton beat West Ham on the last day of the season. Eric Ten Hag, potential signing stink of arrogance and laziness. The thing is, he will get the sack by December. That wouldn't surprise me. I hope I'm wrong. I back him, but there's a little bit in the back of my mind that's thinking. I don't know. <laughs> Someone always has a Man United fan as a friend. Give him plenty of love. We need it right now, Gary. We need it. Uh, I give up with this club once Ronaldo's gone. We have to rely on Rashford. And Marcian, hang on. Hang on. Here's a bit of positivity, folks. Marcial will be like a new signing. <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. I heard a statistic that without Ronaldo um, last season, I think we would have finished 16th without his goals. Yes. Or was it 14th? I think it might have been 14th or 16th, one or the other. It's going to blow up in Ten Hag's face. United 15th, Everton 16th. Um, 10th behind the top five. L Lucasil, Wolves, Leicester, West Ham. Guys, keep liking that motherfucking video. I've got, look, last story up. I've been going an hour and I still got another um another transfer uh story. It's cut no. It's coming from Foot Mercado, who are not the most credible French out there, and it's also coming from the sun. Bin Tear FC out here. But a couple of other people have picked up on it, and it is that Manchester United are interested in Nice centre back Jean Claire Tadibo. Tadibo? Jean, I was going to say Jean Claude. <laughs> Jean Claire Tadibo. Um, Newcastle are also interested, but every time I I've mentioned we're interested in a player, Newcastle always, they seem to be mentioned as well. He is a former Barcelona player. He has been at me nice since 2021, and apparently he has been the standout centre-back in La Ligue, or in Ligue 1 oh, last season in the French League. Um, United are looking at alternatives and options other than Lissandro Martinez in case we don't get that deal done. No. £17 million is the asking price. £17 million, guys. I don't bullshit you on here. I have never seen this player play ever. He is a former French under 20 player. He's 22. He'll be 23 in December. Again, if you've act no, folks, not if you've used him on FIFA and he's got good FIFA stats. If you've actually seen him play, this is the whole thing. I, I mean, I've been gassed. I was so gassed when we signed Alex Tellez. Oh my God. What a bad signing. Um, so, <laughs> you know, um, no. He played 40 games for Nice last season. He's calm on the ball. He's a unit. He's quick. He's a good passer. A defensive phenomenon was the quote. A defensive phenomenon. He's physical and he's efficient in defending. I'm sure if you looked for a quote on Phil Jones years ago, probably said the same thing. So it means not very much. However, Nice conceded the joint lowest amount of goals last season in the French League. And apparently, according to where you read in the outlets online, he was a very big part of that. So look, he's available. £17 million, folks. 
That is Jean Claire Tadibo. Tadibo, yeah. Jean Claude, I'm going to call, if we sign him, I'm going to call him Jean Claude. Uh, he's okay, says Danish. We need better than okay. Uh, he's the unit for fuck's sake. We already have a fridge. Teles didn't play as much as we uh, thought last season because uh, he was shite. I would take Manuel from 40 hours at this rate. I haven't really seen the business Newcastle have done bar Pope. They got Sven Botman as well, who is a very, very good centre-back. I would have taken it Man United and we were linked to him as well. Ten Hag is still talking to De Jong. Yeah, I mean, they won £50 million for Badashiel as well. Um, shout out to Gary again. What a legend for the Super Chat supporting the channel. What is the true budget for the transfer for Manchester United? That is the million dollar question. And according to our CEO, it was 200 million. According to a lot of the outlets, it was 120 million pounds. That was what was said all along. Richard Arnold said it was 200 million, but it looks like our net spend currently is 2 million pounds. 2 million. I would say the transfer budget is five llamas, a um, couple of takeaways, a couple of free points at Old Trafford and some of those curry pies that they have there. That's what I'd say they'll throw in, in the add-ons on top of the 2 million. At <laughs> this rate, shout out to Gary for the super chat support in the channel. Guys, let me know what the likes are. Um, can we get to well over 150 likes? Come on, guys, 200 likes. Let's get there. There's 200 watching. No reason why you shouldn't all be smashing the motherfucking like button. My scouse friend, says Gary, fights. Um, starting catch you soon. 145 says Gaz, come on, guys, get the likes up. Marcus Rashford has left Man United Tour in order to launch. <laughs> oh my god. Um, United is the only club whose owners, yes, in the Premier League. That is true. Looks like McFred Bruno midfield again says Abdi, kill me. Um, <laughs> three Frank Trevor Francis tracksuits and some David Bowie LPs who we already have the deep freeze. Um, Mary, what will your team be? In I can't bring it up. Um, the comments are going to be funny. One second, guys. Um, oh, here we go. Mary, what will your team be against Liverpool? Fuck me. <sighs> oh. Fucking hell. <laughs> Dalo to here. Lindelof Aran, Lindelof. Oh my God. Lindelof Aran. <laughs> I'm not even going to say Luke Shaw. Tell us. I'm going to say um, Malasia. Okay. Malasia. I'm going to say him. Um, fucking hell. Midfield of it. Fred, get your, get your um, starting 11s in the live chat. Oh my God. I'm going to say Garner and Fred. Bruno, because Ericsson isn't there. <laughs> Nobody FC up front. Two do we have up front? Fucking hell. Sancho. Sancho on the right. Garnacho on the left. Oh, it's going to be. Did Hugo or McNeil go on? It's obviously going to be Martial, but oh my God. Shoot me in the head. Shoot me. <laughs> yes. Uh, the amount of so called United fans that think Eric Ten Hag will work wonders with the squad. I, Gary, I've been saying the same thing. I think we're going to struggle. I also asked the live chat where we think we'll finish the season. I said 10th, 9th, or 10th. Looking at it right now, obviously, it could change depending on the signings. But, guys, 197 watching, get the likes up. Like, 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 come on. Um, Let's get to 200 likes on the video. Wait in the protest v Brighton first game of the season. Um, shout out to Bunkers. If Ronaldo leaves, we don't sign a striker. Who 
Would you choose? Oh, God. You're killing me, guys. You're killing me. I choose. <laughs> I'm not choosing Marcial or Ronaldo or, 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 or. I'm not fucking choosing Rashford or Marcial. I'll choose Charlie McNeil. That's who I'll choose. Play him. Give it to him until the end of the season. Give it to him. Fuck it. I can't do worse than, <laughs> than Rashford or Martial. Oh, my God. Score prediction. Oh, God. <laughs> Guys, tell me. 4 0 Liverpool. I was going to say 14 0 for a second. 4 0 Liverpool. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, we should not pitch uh, to the Liverpool game at all. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, can we cancel the game against Liverpool? A uh, shout out to the Mandalorian. He says, We could get right back Gusto from Leon. I mentioned it to you some months ago. He is better than what we have. We need a pacey overlapper with a knee cross or hijack taint. That signing mind. Bet the bears to the shit. It's caroling. So, yeah, trust me, it's shit. Uh, you forgot to mention the dividends. Oh, yes. Dividend FC. He'll be fucking, he'll be our signing of the season, that fucker. Dividend. Uh, so is that figure docking the 40 million for the Glazers? That you guys are correcting me. Pray for a flood. <laughs> a flood? Maybe a flood rather than a flood like failure. Fucking hell. Um, hopefully we don't beat them. Otherwise, the board will think these are good players are good enough, probably. Did anyone see the Sierra Leone fixtures last week? 91-1. Is that true? <laughs> Who the fuck were they playing? Kids. 3-2. Uh, win for us. Go on, VS. United 3-0. Guys, are you, are you drunk? <laughs> um, getting games cancelled does nothing. We have seen it already. I, I, I don't know. They shot themselves after we cancelled that Liverpool game. Uh, fuck around to play Tom Heaton in midfield. Can't be worse than McTominay. Uh, we'll probably beat Liverpool. It's a friendly <laughs> 3 27 to 0 11. 3 0 Liverpool, 2 1 Man United, says Nick. 3 1 Liverpool, Maz. Nil all. Oh, sorry, Charlie. Your, my finger was blocking the Liverpool score. 5 0, fucking hell. 1 0. <laughs> yes. 5 0, 5 1. 3-0. Come on, guys. Get those motherfucking likes up, Garnacho. For up front, uh, I play him over the other two. I, I I play a false nine over Martial and maybe play Bruno in the false nine. And Ericsson in the Bruno role. Go with that. That's probably what I would do over Charlie McNeil, actually, because it would be unfair. Um, uh, on uh, Guys, I keep putting on uh, lip balm because my lips are really sore. Um, I'd play Bruno. Yes, Neil, Neil, yeah. Um, Donny in behind is a good show. Or, or Ericsson, one or the other. But yeah, that's what I would do as well. Um, let's see what you guys are saying. De Gea, Dalo, Lindelof, Oran, Mal Malasia, Garner, Fred. Alang oh, yes, Elanga. My apologies, I forgot about Elanga. Uh, and I would play... Alanga as well. Uh, Liverpool therapy staff seven United one depends. Have Liverpool been to the pub before the match? Seven nil. Lee Grant up front. It's definitely five. Man United five. Liverpool four. Liverpool will smash us. A reminder of what's to come. Sadly, actually United will win three one. Ooh, and the board will think that team is good enough. That has happened to us before as well. Just to like stick the knife in even more. The player who we wanted, who we all wanted, who the manager wanted. Our biggest rivals got. We're losing our striker. We don't even have one. Yeah. 
it's going to be a tennis score. <laughs> Deuce. Um, Clock will tell his team to let Man United play their new system without too much hassle. I don't know, Eugene. Last game of the season, both level on points. Mary, if you had a choice to run the football club. <laughs> Give me I take Boris right now in desperate. <laughs> uh Joel Glazer, the signing of the season. Uh Sancho up front, Ericsson left, Bruno right, Donnie in behind. Oh, you're going for it. You're going for it, peaceful. Yes, yes, yes. Still 190 watching. Where have you fucking been, my you motherfucking legends? Please like, please subscribe. Can we get to 200 likes? It's on you guys. These are bluffers. They will perform and Eric Ten Hag will think these losers are okay. No need for signings. Then they'll show up under the bus. Alistair knows the score. And we've heard it, folks. We talked about it in a video recently. I talked about it with Laz and Beck. And, and the rumor was that Eric Ten Hag was going to give everyone a fresh start. And I was the only one on the panel that didn't agree with that because I didn't feel like some of these players deserved another chance. And let's not forget, some of these players as well have been on their fourth, their fifth, their sixth chance. I mean, Luke Shaw has been here since 2014. He's overseen more fucking managers than, uh, I mean, I don't know what even, <laughs> what a good analogy is. You know, does he deserve another chance? No. Um, I see that just pre-season. Yeah, it is, but, you know, it's Liverpool as well. The board convinced Ten Hag the squad is good enough. Listen to his first interview. More fool him. Uh, good thing about Ten Hag, he will at least give Donny a chance. I hope so, Eva. I hope so. Um, American owners, American football score, 14-3. <sighs> But that wouldn't surprise me because we've had some dodgy results on preseason two with teams I've never even heard of um, getting wins and stuff and we've lose, lost. And I know it's mostly about fitness, so the results don't matter, except against Liverpool. Just don't get dicked. Just don't get it. But guys, I am going to leave it there. My replay crew, I know I never, I don't forget about you guys. Get in after the video is published with the topics that we discussed. Tell me where you think we'll finish the season as of right now. What do you rate this transfer window out of 10? What would you do about the, the De Jong transfer? Would you walk away? Um, what about Lissandro Martinez? Eric Ten Hag wants us to increase the bid. Would you do it more than 50 million euros? Let me know, folks. I'll be back tomorrow, nine o'clock again. Make sure you turn on your notifications bell so you're in here with me. Guys, have a smashing Sunday, everyone. Take care all.